today we're looking at Gladys Aylward. She was born in London 119 years ago in 1902. She was the daughter of a postman and the oldest of three siblings. She left school early and by the age of 14 she was already working long hours as a maid for a wealthy family. Between chores she would slip into her master's library and look at one of his many books about China, a country whose people and culture absolutely fascinated her. Gladys went along to church every Sunday but it was when she was 18 her life was changed. She heard a sermon which talked about the importance of giving one's life over to God and she became a Christian that day. And as time went on, she realised she would like to go overseas to tell others about Jesus. So she went to see the organisation that sent missionaries to China. The director was a very serious man. He was sighing and shaking his head as he saw that she had left school early. He told her that her grades were not good enough and at 26 she would be too old to learn the Chinese language. Gladys's dream of serving in China was crushed, but Gladys wouldn't take no for an answer. Little by little, a penny at a time, she saved enough money to purchase the cheapest ticket to China, which was by train. The travel agent said the route was impossible because Russia and China were at war. He said, we do not like to deliver our customers dead. But Gladys ignored him and two years later, she kissed her family goodbye and went on a train bound for China. And her prayer was this, here's my Bible, here's my money, here's me. Use me, God. She had a tiny amount of money, her Bible, a pen, and her tickets and passport. She carried a suitcase in each hand, a kettle and a saucepan tied to the handles with rope. The travel agent had been right, though. The journey by rail, ship, and even at one point on foot was nearly impossible. Gladys slept several nights on coal train platforms across Siberia, grateful that she'd packed a blanket. After many weeks of gruelling travel, Gladys arrived in the mountain village of Yangcheng in northern China. And as she entered the tiny village, a group of children screamed, running from her in terror. Two women picked up mud and threw it at her. It happens every time I go out. A 74-year-old missionary called Jeannie Lawson told a confused Gladys, They hate us here. They call us Lao Yang Kui, which means foreign devils. It's something you'll have to get used to. Now the village was an overnight stop for travellers and traders passing through, so Jeannie and Gladys decided to open an inn. A place to sleep, to eat good food and hear stories. The Chinese loved stories, so the ladies planned to share the gospel in the form of stories with them and hoped that the travellers would then carry the message to other parts of China. The problem was that the people preferred to sleep on the street rather than stay at the inn of the foreign devils. Gladys decided to take action. She grabbed the reins of the traveller's mules and led it toward the courtyard so the travellers didn't have any choice but to follow. Over time, the inn became popular and Gladys ran it even when Jeannie died. As time passed, Gladys got better at speaking the language and people began to trust her. And at one point, there was a huge riot at the prison and the panicked guard came to her for help. He said to her, If you preach the truth... If your God protects you from harm, then you can stop this riot. Gladys was terrified, but God gave her the courage to speak. Miraculously, the rioting prisoners listened to her. Another thing that Gladys did was to begin to take orphan children into the inn. At one point, a hundred orphan children lived at the inn. Now, when the Japanese began to bomb the mountain villages in 1937, Gladys refused to leave. She wrote in a letter to her mother saying, these are my people. God has given them to me and I will live or die with them for him and his glory. The bombs kept coming, so she gathered all 100 orphans and prepared to escape. If they couldn't find an empty barn, they would spend their nights in caves or in the open, huddled on the ground in the cold. There was little to eat or drink and Gladys often gave her a small portion to a hungry child. Gladys and the older children carried the young ones for miles at a time, encouraging them with hymns, prayers and entertaining stories. And 27 days after they escaped, Gladys and her orphans arrived at a safe place, with every child having survived. Gladys, however, was very ill. The doctors didn't think she'd survive. But in time, Gladys eventually recovered from her illness. 
It didn't take her long to start sharing the good news in this new village, and in the prisons too. A few years later, the government forced Gladys to leave China. She returned to Britain. She tried to return to China ten years later, but the government denied her. Instead, she settled in a place called Taiwan, where she worked as a missionary until her death in 1970. This was a lady who didn't take no for an answer. She trusted God and showed bravery in travelling alone into the unknown in order to do what she knew what was God's calling for her life. We thank God for Gladys Aylward.